Okay, everyone able to see my screen, I guess, right? There is no problem in screen uh, sharing. If you have any problem, please chat in that. I will uh, try to figure it out. Okay. So about me, I am uh, Radha Krishnan Govindan, also known as RK. I have 10 years of experience in IT. I am a consultant in by profession and I am a Microsoft uh, MVP and MCT. I hold many certifications and I am a author and blogger of windowstechpro.com. This is my details I have provided in that. So what is data loss prevention? Why do we need? By default, if you see by in organizations, uh, data is the most complicated thing and uh, people are struggling to protect. And uh, when, when it is non-promises, we have many devices configured to protect our data. Still, uh, uh, there, uh, there will be leakages. And now the data, you are hosting your data on cloud and data is getting published in many, many uh, data center across the board. And uh, people are, uh, you know, allowed to use from home and, you know, modern, modern devices. So how we can protect using data loss prevention and those users using desktop, laptop, mobile devices and other platforms and how securely we can allow, uh, you know, accessing to the data and how we can protect so that, uh, you know, corporate data should not get leaked to outside, right? So that is where data loss prevention is coming in picture and this suit provides uh, to protecting the data across the board in Office 365. And what data loss prevention does, basically it identify uh, the you know, sensitive information and monitors where you are sending. Say you are trying to share uh, you know, your, your credit card information and where you, you are trying to share, it will monitor, the system will monitor whether you are sharing inside or outside and it will tell you, you are sharing to the outside and it is not allowed. Okay, it will protect the data and also it will educate uh, to the users telling that you are trying to share, uh, you know, sensitive information, please take care of yourself. That is what data loss prevention does and it provides, you know, control, uh, a four le level of control to your data. And uh, data loss prevention initially it was launched along with uh, you know Exchange 2013 and uh, then it uh, followed with Exchange 2016 also and for initially in cloud uh, it hosted along with Exchange Online post that it has been uh, you know uh, uh, deployed to SharePoint Online also OneDrive OneDrive for business. All right, DL, the, how DLP uh, basically works, as an administrator, you will configure set of policies, say uh, user should not share their credit card information. The policy, I, as an administrator, you, uh, you will set a policies, that policies will get configured to the platform, say uh, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for Business, and that policies will, will get deployed to the user machines, and it will get distributed among all the devices and then when when it will keep on monitoring the systems and what you are doing it will it will also give the education to the users telling that this information is particularly for your corporate and you should not share so this informations are getting published or through uh, you know uh, information workers Whenever you're trying to share some data and that data is getting validated by your server, say Exchange Online, when you are sharing the data through Exchange, um, you know, Outlook or Exchange or Outlook on the web, that will get validated by the Exchange Online. If you are sharing the data through SharePoint Online, that data getting validated by your SharePoint servers. Once it is validated, it will audit whether the you know data is right one to protect or the sensitive information you are trying to share if it is yes then it will create a you know incident for that and that incident will be sent to the compliance manager or compliance you know uh, team to validate and you know uh, take action against that data that is how it works 
once again i'm going through as an administrator you will configure set of policies what your user should share and not to share that policies will go to your servers uh, servers uh, exchange online sharepoint online then that will get distributed to the user machines or user platforms then whenever they try to share that will background verification will go through that if it is matching to the conditions it will audit and it will create an incident for that and it that incident will go to the incident manager compliance manager uh, le let me take you to the exchange online how data loss prevention works in exchange right basically when when you configure the data loss prevention policies the exchange online it works under categorizer categorizer whenever you send out an email or when you're drafting an email your categorizer will analyze what you are trying to share then that categorizer will categorize the mail it is a sensitive or non-sensitive if it is sensitive it will protect if it is non-sensitive it will allow you so in exchange it will work under categorizer that comes along with your transport rule agents in sharepoint in sharepoint 2013 and you know sharepoint online there is a new addition added classification operator that that takes care about data loss prevention policies and education and production to the data so this is how it works in Exchange Online SharePoint. And now, let me take you how we are enforcing this, uh, you know, DLP policies. Basically, as an as a uh, administrator, you will configure the rules, and that rules will get to the get to the machines. And any rule matching, first it will alert the user, and then it will encrypt the data, and it will override whether uh, whether user allowed to override the rule or not basically as an administrator you can control that if you want to user to override you can allow or else you can block it then if you are not allowing a user to override directly it will get blocked that is this is how uh, dlp policies are enforced to the platforms and the data will get getting blocked in the DLP, basically we have a templates, uh, template in, term, in terms of base, uh, default templates, say credit cards, so credit card digits formats are there, and also healthcare departments or PAN card details. Uh, many, many default templates already Microsoft published, it's available to you, you to configure easily. If you want to make a custom templates which is required for in, your infrastructure, that you can customize it that uh, you need to customize through xml files and you need to upload it to your X, uh, office 365 dlp uh, portal once you upload you can you can see that policies and you can configure it so uh, let me let me take you to the uh, compliance center If you log into the portal, you will uh, you under administrative centers. You can see the security and compliance. If you click, it will take you to the this portal security and compliance. Under that, data loss prevention is the tab. You can see the policies. But I have already created few policies, and I will show you how to create new policy as well. Initially, it was allowed with a, with Exchange Online alone. After that, the you know. Uh, the features what data loss prevention provided uh, it matured to sharepoint and onedrive so that microsoft you know would deploy to other platforms as well if you are exchange administrator you want to configure only for your exchange you can configure here if you want to configure dlp policies across across other platforms you can go to data loss prevention and security and compliance center then you can do it here if you see here uh, it will it will have a tabs uh, you know, uh, tiles telling that data loss uh, you know uh, policy matches and false positives if you see here few uh, few policy matches already found 
uh, in my tenant one uh, one incident for exchange online and other six incident for one drive for business and if you see there is no false positive Fal false positive means uh, uh, dlp policies wrongly match to the conditions say user if user complaining it is a false positive that you will get it here if it if it is not false positive you will get it get it under this board if you go here and you will get a reports for that policy matching conditions you can get the reports customized one so if you click on create policy it will take you to the new policy new policy dlp policy tab and you can see default templates which is available and it is based on the locations based on the regions or countries by default you can see australia financial data canada financial data this is all customized templates available and which are uploaded by microsoft and these templates are well tested and uploaded you can say it is uh, you know 99 percent it is it is uh, exactly matching condition what Microsoft uploaded here. And you can see all financial data if you want to, uh, Australia financial data, whatever comes, right? SIFT code, Australia tax file numbers, all those things are already uploaded. These conditions are, you know, backend uplo uploaded in XML file or other formats in, in Office 365. And if you want to protect, medical and health health uh, you know policies that also available that is only you know allowed australia and canada and america region things and also privacy data uh, like your pan card passport numbers or any visa numbers all those things uh, if you want to protect based on the countries that templates are available you can use that and if you want any customized you need to upload it using powershell commands let me take you to the policy uh, you know uh, india policy what we call it as pan card block okay any user in my tenant or in my organization if i want to protect people sending their pan card information to the outside world i want to block that my compliance team telling that you know uh, users are not allowed to send pan card details of india or uh, they are they are not allowed to share their credit card information if they are asking such details, I can come over here. I can select accordingly. Uh, so these are all the countries by default available. And if I go to I want to protect a you know credit card information so i can select here and go next and give the you know name for that policy and give description whatever you want and the locations basically in office 365 data is uh, data is getting stored in different places uh, one is exchange online it maintains own data centers and own data platforms where your exchange data is getting stored in terms of database or mailboxes and sharepoint sites this is also also a place where your data are getting stored and onedrive for business and this is where your onedrive data is getting stored all these three platforms where exactly your data are getting stored though you are using your platform in other places say if you are using teams OneDrive, Excel, and uh, anything, if you are using that data is getting stored here in these three platforms. So you can customize. If you want to apply only for Exchange Online, you can uh, switch, uh, turn it off and you can apply only for Exchange on, alone. Or if you want to apply for two platforms that you can customize. If you want to uh, choose sites particular, you can select it select it here or if you want to exclude a certain uh, site say example uh, maybe you you given some sites to your you know financial departments where people are loading credit card information or pan card information of the employees that data should not get protected i mean uh, that data should not get blocked if you want to exclude that uh, sites that you can add it here by default it will be for all 
if you want to exclude you can exclude it here and here uh, it will apply same if you want to you know block uh, all users that you can do or if you want to you know unblock certain users that also it is possible to do it here once you selected the locations where you want to apply then go to the policies these are all the condition credit card numbers shift code international banking account number which are, which are comes you know along with that template what we selected so here this is the condition detect when this content is shared if you want to block when internal users sharing that information to outside that you can select it here if you want to block specific to outside that you can do or internally also user should not do that also you can select it here and the conditions if you want to modify something here you can do if you want to uh, say example i don't want these two conditions only credit card information should be there yes you can you can remove this and go for it only credit card information will be blocked and if you want any advanced settings you can use it here and set it say example oh, there are two set of uh, you know uh, uh, directions available one is low volume and another one is high volume say uh, user uh, particular user uh, they can share their own credit card information right that uh, if one time if he is sharing through that mail uh, it means one time he mentioned in that mail chain or in that site or in one drive that is allowed if you are matching if you putting that condition that will be low volume if any user is putting a larger number of credit card numbers basically uh, i could see some questionaries uh, you know questions are coming in uh, definitely i will answer once you know session is completed we will have around 15 minutes question and answer session there i will definitely answer for your queries okay so uh, if any user is trying to send uh, around 15 or 20 uh, you know credit card uh, numbers in a mail or in an excel sheet that is not uh, you know uh, that is not good right that data should be protected so there you can set high volume and uh, you can protect completely there are low volume uh, based on the condition if one time fine you can allow uh, if it is matching higher number of credit card numbers in that mail you can block it that uh, that leverage is there in this conditions you can edit here if you go and you will see here minimum how many instance or count can match in that particular mail or uh, you know excel sheet if he is sharing uh, you know minimum 10 numbers then i volume i volume of uh, you know deduction will happen for that you can apply a particular condition say example block it or if you want to allow you can allow it if it is more you can take action and if it is if it is less volume you can probably allow or it depends on your organization policies say here one to nine if credit card particular information matching you can allow it if it is matching more than that you can block it this conditions will be uh, you know uh, decided by your organization compliance manager compliance policies once you decided all this you can you can review the policy and when you are reviewing the policy there are three conditions by default microsoft not allowing directly deploy the policy to the uh, you know production uh, workload say uh, if you are deploying directly the pro production workload maybe the conditions uh, you know if if it is not matching also will get blocked sometime so what will happen the genuine uh, data also will get you know blocked so uh, being said that don't directly you know implement policies to the production workload first you test it how we can test there are the conditions i, I would like to test it uh, you know first okay then uh, if you do that what will happen uh, the data will get you know uh, passed through but you will get a incidents or counts which is matching to this particular condition say example 100 mails going through matching to this policy as a, a compliance manager you will get a counts 
uh, the data won't get blocked anyhow. You will get a count so that you can go through it, whether it is a genuine match or false positive. If it is a genuine match, fine if it is false positives also there then you know you know you need to go through the policy again and you need to customize that that you need to do it here and another option what you can go you can give the policy tape this is where users are getting educated the policy is in test mode but users will get a policy tip telling that you can customize the policy tip uh, you are trying to share the credit card information that is not allowed as per the organization if you are try sharing you know uh, after this so and so date your data will be protected that you can do it here so data will go through but the users will get educated or telling but okay this after 15 data will get blocked i should not share this kind of information that education will go through this mode what it call test mode with policy tips all right once you tested or uh, everything is fine then you can go and apply for a pro production workloads there pause you know uh, real actions will happen through that production workload once you selected and turn it on the all user matching to that conditions and matching to that you know uh, actions what you are taking it will happen in this particular area so if you are blocking definitely the data will get blocked if you are allowing it will allow if you overriding that also will happen through this all right this is how you need to define the policy this is how we need to test it uh, I also suggest don't directly deploy any data, you know, DLP policy, uh, be it, uh, you know, a small policy or big policies, do not apply to the workload, production workload directly. Please test it carefully, review it. Once reviewed, then you apply it to the production. All right. This, this is how the policies are getting defined. And let me tell you, I have created uh, three different policies. You can see India, Indian PAN card block DLP policy. And this policy, I uh, defined it for only for business. And another policy I created, PAN card block for exchange workload. This policy, if you go to this policy, I specifically selected my exchange workload. So anything matching to the exchange online workload, that only will take care. This policy will not get distributor to the other other uh, you know workload say sharepoint online one drive for business this will not go to this platforms it will apply only to this and if you see there is no exclusions you cannot exclude any exchange uh, you know uh, any exchange workload uh, uh, mailboxes through this uh, specific one when you when you want to do it for sharepoint sites you are getting options right and wonder if a business also remains same, but exchange online it goes among all other all mailboxes. In this, I define nerd policies. Uh, I volume when when it is deducting more than two PAN card numbers, right? If it is matching more than two counts in that particular mail, I want to block it in an exchange workload and that accuracy also I have mentioned here. If you see here, minimum maximum is there. So accuracy, if it is, if it is uh, matching to the you know minimum two and maximum anything, it will uh, the condition uh, the what I put in anybody trying to share to outside world and the condition is block it. You can see here, I am blocking com completely and uh, you know I am notifying user, hello, you are trying to share a PAN card number. Right. So uh, when when you when you are blocking and you want to get a you know customized report as a compliance manager, right? You are an administrator. You can do all those things from the back end. But compliance manager they don't go through this portals and all. They need a mail copies so that they can check what is happening and they can follow with the particular user who is trying to do that activities. So that you can you can put it here. And email notifications also will go to that particular persons. If you see any incident coming and matching to that, the incident will get generated. The original mail, if you see what I have done, notify user who sent, shared, and last modified the content. 
and the data will get passed to these people the compliance manager where or uh, whom i have designated as a compliance manager these people they, they will get a notification along with that mails mail copies what match to that i will show you how it is customized and how it is good to understand even a common manager you know normal manager or common man how dlp you know uh, they can understand that i will show you later on so these people they will get a notification and as an administrator and they will get along with this information as an administrator you can select uh, this you know condition say example you want to see who modified content what matured and uh, you want to uh, you want to send it an attachment all those things you can attach it and send to this particular two people when these two people receiving mail they will get all these things right the report will go along with this information so that the admin the compliance manager they can easily understand and take action against that particular incident all right if you see the conditions in this particular policy this is one and actions what i am doing block it and when the user are sending to outside world and user notification yes i am i am notifying the user here along with customized uh, customizer tip and and uh, override options i completely blocked it see you, you can see here i have not checked that if you are allowing override hello uh, everyone can hear me audio right audio is a problem right you are not able to hear me right uh, who will receive particular you know uh, uh, incidents along with this uh, you know customized uh, uh, you know uh, uh, information and the, if you see the low uh, low volume content uh, detection also i configured here in this policy one or anything if matching that also i am you know uh, maximum two i am keeping here if it is matching to this condition it will consider as a low volume content and it will also what i am doing for this particular policy i am blocking that and i am sending a report to this uh, compliance manager and this is the report what they will get okay and this i applied only for exchange online and if you go to the other policy what i configured here this is customized for sharepoint online on onedrive for business and here i have turned it off for exchange online so here i have not excluded any urls and not excluded any mailboxes or users to you know come out of this policy by default i am sending everyone under this policy and conditions remain same as as it is for exchange workload why i have put to two different uh, policies tomorrow if i want to make any customization for particular one day for business that i can do uh, by default why i have created different policy for one day for business and sharepoint that is where the users are allowed to upload their data 
by default if they upload share by you know uh, their salary slips or other you know uh, form section those kind of thing by default pan card numbers will be there right so if you are not allowing that user how we can store your how you can store uh, you know data on one drive for business basically you are losing your workload what allowed uh, along with your office 365 right so for one drive for business i am allowing users and that uh, you know by default now i'm blocking but uh, basically it is not considered you can block that user only thing what you can block uh, if he is he can store the data on one drive for business but you should not allow to share that to outside people right you got it right one drive for business allowed to store the data but when they are trying to share the information to outside of users that you can block it and another one another policy what i have created the this is another set of policy what i want uh, specific reason uh, any anybody in my organization they want to share ip addresses right uh, i uh, for say example my organization they bought set up ip addresses right uh, uh, that ip addresses we only re registered that information should not go to outside people say uh, uh, say i have registered some uh, set up ip addresses and secured for my platforms if i am you know giving this information to the outside people they can hackers can easily get that ip addresses and they can see the loopholes right so that information i want to block it users should not get into you my ip address they should not know my ip addresses and if they know also that should not get published to the outside world so what i have done for that reason i created a policy Uh, any any person inside my organization they are trying to share ip address as a message as a content or whatever it is when they are trying to share i wanted to block them right for that i have created an incident i put it even a single ip address when it is matching it should not go that is a, that is for why i have created policies and i defined all the condition along with user override incident reports and then i put it uh, put it in place for my production before i am putting i have yes i have tested it clearly it is matching to my condition then i put it right if you want to check uh, you know how many you know matches to that you can go here and you can select the date range say a particular date range you want to select that you can do it here say the policies what and all matching yeah, i want to see particular policy that i can see actions rules whatever uh, say example i want to see last 6 months uh, from this date to till date i want to see what are all the policies matched uh for example specific for dlc uh, dlp policy for pan card block right i created a policy i wanted to see how many match counts for this particular policy if you select the date count it will show you the policies and if you want to go for any other policies it will show you so here you can see generic uh, notify user generic incident reports block access everything it will show you by de default if you see total 54 matched notified 54 and incident created 54 and blocked 54 exactly the actions are matched and uh, you know uh, everything matched to that particular incident and if i want to uh, you know see matching to the exchange online the policy what i created that also you will get it here and you want to create a scheduled report say example so, you know certain uh, reports you want to get it in mail that you can create it here and filters also allowed if you want to see sharepoint on uh, sharepoint alone that report also possible only for business exchange whatever you want it is possible and when you go to that policies you will see that what matched for that see here uh, notify user who who, uh, who trying to send this is the id which is trying to send what is the policy matched this is the policy and what is the rule this is uh, you know good uh, for this rule and what is the event type dlp action aids 
and when it is matured and what is the organization what is the sensitive confidence level matured for that and what is the count if you see the three counts match to this condition and the sense sensitive information confidence dlp is telling 85 percent this the three counts matching to this condition that is why it blocked you can see it is uh, you know uh, confidence level also it's good right it is basically required when you are auditing something and what what kind of information it matched indian uh, you know permanent account number pan card details and the severity high and size because it blocked the size is telling zero and source is exchange if it is a sharepoint online you will get a sharepoint or if you are uh, applied for one drive business you will get it for one drive right this information for us as an administrator we can go through it that is what i mentioned before you are putting into production you apply in a test mode and you see this action plans what and all matching to that and generate a report using here and you go through that then you put it into production it will give you it's up uh, you know with everything you can say whatever you know action happened whatever condition matched to that all right this is how we need to define the policy now let's see how it is working as a user uh, you know uh, how it is protecting users right you define it policy you are seeing everything here and how workloads are getting protected with the sensitive information say uh, this is this is my user uh, trainings at windowstechpro.com and what user is trying to send as a user is trying to send an email to outside and what is trying to send pan card numbers and he is trying to attach see how how fast it is as soon as i attach a, a document which has a pan number so i will show you the pan numbers which uh, which is available there this is the document what it is i have created you know uh, some i put it some numbers here which is which is uh, you know indian uh, pan number which is ma exactly matching to the indian pan uh, department right so i created this document along with these numbers as soon as i created and i attach it to this mail and when it is sending to the outside it is matching see if i remove it here this policy is getting out right if when i if i want to send it to internal user there is no action is being taken because the policy defined in such a way whenever the person trying to send outside world protected if it is a internal matching it won't block that is what i mentioned it will identify what data you attached and it will monitor to where you are sending say example if you are sending external it will immediately notify if you are sending internal it won't notify anything this is what monitoring you are the data has been identified and it will it is monitoring where you are sending you, as soon as you entered another mail address which is matching to the external world it is telling you and if you go through it it, it is telling this is what it is the policy what we define and this message appears to contain the following sensitive information pan card number and if you want to uh, say it is a false positive you can report it here this report uh, yes uh, we can i can i will answer a few questions please hang on guys i will definitely answer all your queries so you can report it here as soon as you report it will come to a, a you know administrator administrator will go through it why you reported as a false positive you can customize it you know uh, why it is false positive and, and uh, you know then then uh, you will get you know uh, the uh, administrator can you know, uh, probably can go through that policy and redefine if it is exactly fine uh, you can reply to the user yes this is correct don't uh, you know send those information 
right and what it is telling this is the person who is outside and if you are not removing this recipient this mail will not go how sweet it is as soon as you had external parties which is matching to the dlp policy and you are getting no user will get notified along with beautiful information whoever seeing that information he can easily understand and the information see you added uh, you know internal and external parties and matching data as soon as you remove the policy will go out this is how uh, you know dlp is working as soon as you do something it dlp will come in picture and as soon as you remove something dlp will go out of it it will completely monitor monitor your platform this is this is the distribution what dlp is doing it will distribute to your all workloads even dlp works for your uh, you know office uh, ms office suite also if you are installed you want to protect some data were installed in your machine that also possible through dlp policies right so we have seen exchange online how it is protecting if you are say example i am i am trying to share this information and as soon as i try to send you are getting a notify telling that you are not allowed to send until you remove this guy right and Uh, and if you if you see it is not only protecting particular word or you know ms office it will protect even a gif format even it is a notepad or pdf file you attach any any so you know format it will definitely protect that data you can see here i have attached a gif where it contains a pdf you know document file with pan code numbers it immediately detects don't think this protect uh, their dlp policy will work only for ms office it will work whatever format you are attaching as as long as it is a readable and uh, you know it is uh, you are sending to outside world right so we have seen how it is happening in exchange online now let's see how one of a business it is happening see as a user i uh, uh, you try to upload certain documents that document what it contains same pan numbers as soon as this pan numbers matching to that what happens the file is getting protected you can see a small indication here the document access uh, to this item is blocked what happens as soon as this particular item blocked the user who uploaded the train uh, training for windows tech pro.com you can go through and modify the document Uh, you only will get access you cannot send it or you cannot share it to anyone outside from this you know uh, one drive you can modify once you modified what will happen one drive for business uh, you know will go through the process and then the policy will get uh, you know stamped out of this right uh, same it happens through excel sheet and if you are uploading anything uh, anything be it in this it will block it right and if you go to the sharepoint online it remains same let me let me show you the sharepoint online uh, i have created a site called uh, Uh, bhai, uh, definitely I will answer what is the disadvantages advantages uh, with DLP. Please hang on, uh, hang on for, for another uh, five or ten minutes. This is the site what I've created, and when uh, when people uploading. Files in this site. the content let me take you to the another sharepoint site okay so the permission i have disabled for this user and 
let me access as an administrator and see the content why i'm not able to access let me check okay so it remains same for sharepoint online and uh, you can see that uh, uh, for some reason i am not able to access my sharepoint sites uh, maybe i will after this session let me troubleshoot and uh, tell you during the q and a session so it remains same wherever these conditions are matched it will give you the reports and that reports you can say see it here the user quota was exceeded it is some reason let me take you to the sharepoint site uh, i want to see what is matched to the sharepoint and from the date of October, say call it as September month onwards. So here SharePoint total this many counts are applied, and this is what SharePoint uh, you know uh, documents got blocked. You can see it here. Same thing uh, it will be there. If anybody trying to upload PAN card numbers or IP details, definitely in SharePoint side that information will get blocked. They will get a notification. What uh, as a user they can go and modify it. It is allowed. And uh, until they modify the document, they will get a notification. What I showed here. They will get a notification here. And if you go and see the details. Uh, this is what the policy tip what they will access to this item is blocked it conflicts with the within your organization tip and what everything whatever you are seeing in exchange online same information you will get it for one for business also sharepoint sites all right so let me go to the presentation again we have gone through the demo and and this is what by default templates available in uh, you know microsoft as i said you can go and upload uh, you know customize the templates microsoft allows that uh, to upload customized templates for your dlp policies and that dlp policies there are a syntax formats that you need to follow it is probably available in dlp sites please go through that and the sharepoint online this is how it is as soon as you upload and it will it will check for that and if it is matching it will block it and how it is how it is a dlp policy works basically as soon as you you know administrator create the policy it will get stored on central central policy store then it will get synced across the platforms like wonderful business sharepoint online exchange online or office applications call it is office 3, uh, ms office 2016 2013 right i'm not sure about 2010 it works with the ms office 2013 and 2016 that's what i have tested and then it starts evaluating content and enforce actions whatever you defining as an administrator and policy based on the policy it works and policy for this uh, one day for business and sharepoint sites and uh, what happens as soon as user uploads uh like exchange online because exchange online is uh, immediate action you are attaching a file and you are uh, adding a sender you are sending so action should be immediate right but sharepoint online and wonderful business how it works as soon as you upload a data it will take some time because search engines in the background background of uh, office uh, you know wonderful business and sharepoint it will search what content it is right it will take some time action won't immediate for this particular two workloads but exchange online is faster that is what i have seen 
this particular uh, it takes around uh, uh, say one hour minimum you created a policy it will take one hour then as soon as user uploads it will take five to ten minutes to detect the information from that workload and uh, stamp uh, dlp policy on it right it is using asynchronous policy evaluation which means you are uploading uh, user uploading a data which is matching to the condition uh, then dlp is uh, you know stamping that uh, you know stamping the policy on it and user validates that and re removes the data you know sensitive data from that and saves it right then what happens uh, sharepoint and wonder for business it again goes and checks that uh, uh, particular data uh, if it is uh, sensitive information removed from that it will stop it i mean it will remove that policy block for that particular file it is asynchronous policy evaluation probably it will take time it will take some time any user comes to you and telling that i have cleared but still that stamping is there right you need to tell user that it will take some time to get out of that block and this is how asynchronous dlp policy evaluation happens right user created or changed content and you stored on that you know sharepoint or wonderful business and the search travels which is running in sharepoint at wonderful business and it validates that and it index that data whatever it is as soon as it is indexed and that index matching to the dlp policy dlp policy will take action right once taken action dlp will put a stamping on that particular data then user will get a notification user definitely go on to see that data you can modify it again search crawls will work for that data and index will happen if no action required for that data because user already removed sensitive information dlp action will go out of that policy this is what we call it as asynchronous dlp policy evaluation basically it takes some time for this particular two workloads but exchange online it's faster and you can see here we are, i already showed you in the demo how user uh, users are getting educated with this they will get a policy tip what we call it is uh, for dlp and it remains same for outlook also vova we tested in the vova outlook also remains same and a uh, user can report if it is a false positive or uh, if it is a genuine one you can remove the data or else based on the action what you are allow, you know added in that policy it will happen to that particular mail whatever user trying to send and it, it, how it works even it works for you know uh, 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 outlook for your mobile right it remains same anybody installed you know outlook uh, on the uh, outlook app on your mobile device you can see this policy tape this policy tip is same for your outlook app also which is you are using on android mobile or ios mobiles sorry this particular dlp policies will not work if you are using other other you know uh, uh, apps say uh, you know uh, gmail app or some other app if you are using and where you configured your corporate mailbox there it won't work if you are using outlook app definitely it is helping there to protect that information what will happen if you are using gmail app right if you are using gmail app you won't get a you know policy tape right but when it is reaching your servers uh, your server will block the data and uh, compliance manager will get a mail only problem user won't get educated but your data will get protected right this is what i showed you the report reporting and auditing things you can see i showed you the policy and how many matching counts all those things and this is where the dashboards available you can go and evaluate if it is uh, you know uh, for management side you can show that or anything you are seeing say 1 lakh matching counts you are seeing uh, you know seeing for that 
definitely it is a uh, something happened with that policy or definitely users are uh, doing something wrong you have to go through this dashboard immediately you need to take action on uh, take action on the policy or else user who is sharing that that uh, you know kind of information say if it is matching one lakh one lakh counts right if it is matching one lakh counts definitely something wrong with your policy or else users so you need to go through it immediately and take action if it is a policy go on modify if it is a user go and check with the user why they are doing that that reporting or audit, auditing is very much available for dlp and it is so matured platform to download and go through the policies and this is what incident uh, you know report what compliance manager will get as i told you when you are configuring you will configure with a manga you know notification content many thing we i showed you right all those information see here message id sender subject all those things i, I configured in that policy that is where the compliance manager getting in the subject area in the body area along with all those information see as soon as a compliance manager sees that it is very uh, you know very uh, very much enough to him to handle that particular incident you no need to go through you know back end uh, portals and all if you see here who is the sender what is matching whether override is uh, allowed or not what is the policy matching and what is the confidence level everything it is smooth right this is what compliance manager will get basically compliance managers from your security folks security folks they will not open your portals and they won't go through it they need uh, everything and so on okay they need uh, you know uh, everything in the gui mode and uh, that should be real time notification right so if you see this is what the audit data user override not allowed false positive no what is the data classification credit card number count is one confidence level is 85 which means 85 percent that policy is matching to this particular mail that is what the confidence if it is lower than uh, 40 30 and all compliance manager probably can ignore it or if you want more uh, information definitely can go through the backend data this is what audit data and this is what the classification which is you know matured to that what is the policy defined what is the classification and what is the uh, you know information all those things you will get a classification for that and this is what the rule configured action audit severity level right production message they will get a notification and this is what matching this is what user trying to send travel information microsoft word he is trying to send some word file that is where he got blocked and if you see there is a there is a file called travel information attached in this mail chain right the subject matching to exactly the attachment so the compliance manager he can open the attachment and see what is matching why that particular user trying to send that credit card number along with travel and this is what extensibility uh, sorry so this is how the real time notification will go to the compliance manager uh, probably whoever you are designated as a compliance manager right now dlp extensibility points so if you want any customized uh, templates needs to be applied definitely it's allowed as i said and you need to use a uh, you know powershell because in gui i have not seen such uh, options available as of now uh, i'm not sure whether uh, microsoft will come up with uh, some plans of it but uh, you can use a powershell management and you can upload your customized policies uh, there is a syntax you need to follow and you need to define that and you as i being said that dlp will work uh, you know after exchange to uh, ms office 2013 and exchange 2013 and uh, i have not seen it is working with 2010 that is what i mentioned earlier also i have tested with exchange uh, ms office 2013 and 2016 versions and this policy tips works very well in the mobile ova and uh, you know uh, in in your normal browser also and that one said everything it works very fine and ob5 new version it works also it has been tested and these are all the resources uh, probably you can go through if you want to configure and you want to see all those things i definitely share to the people who are interested on it and uh, it is already uploaded uh, you know in the 
presentations also uh, probably i will share it to you people later on and here we are getting into the question and answer if you have any questions please uh, please sort it out i will definitely answer for that i completed my presentations so let me abai ask her common template used to dlp frequently used templates so uh, common templates abai uh, uh, as long as i saw uh, like uh, uh, financial informations and also uh, us governments if you are working for some you know us based uh, government projects or healthcare departments or uk based projects right i am seeing that templates are you know uh, default templates are used and it is very much validated by the government officials from that particular regions uh, along with microsoft they validated and it is available there and uh, i don't think so we need to upload uh, you know more customized for healthcare and other uh, common financial production because microsoft itself it is upload they are uploaded that and if you are looking for something customized like uh, particular data what i mentioned ip address or your logo something you should not be there outside that kind of information you need to create a customized policy and upload it and advantages and advantages can be uh, thank you layla uh, i definitely need to answer the advantages and disadvantages uh i i consider it as advantage because uh, uh as a, when you working with a corporate all information are sensitive i have seen many companies they lost business because somebody shared some data say when i'm telling that uh, i go i gone through the uh, people where uh, you know uh, manager send out an uh, you know mail to you a ceo along with the board members Uh, where external board members also were there uh, there they he send out a mail along with uh, the pre plan and post plan of uh, you know last text one year right uh, he, de- he didn't see what is attached and uh, that information went out that information has been shared to the uh, you know uh, 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 newspapers also so sensitive information means sensitive because it is uh, based on your business based on the things it is uh, prote- it has to be protected right so we as a user we need to educate them we need to tell them this is what it is if he is not listening we need to take action that is what dlp does i don't consider it as a disadvantage it definitely advantage and uh, jayanti yes it works very well with the sharepoint uh, being said that sharepoint sites it is taking some time because sharepoint 2013 and 16 it has been implemented and uh, okay, that... actually, uh, actually i just recently enabled one, one of my site collection so oh, right. uh, it will take uh, one one day time to reflect actually uh, sometimes it will reflect after uh, 30 minutes or one hour mm-hmm. but uh, for me it's uh, took uh, one day time so after that i try to upload a document with the credit card information so what it does mm-hmm. uh, after 15 minutes it will send alert to the admin mm-hmm. but meanwhile i'm sharing it to the external user they can able to see my file then <laughs> how much time by default it will take to reflect the policy actually uh microsoft itself recommending by default it takes a 48 hours uh, you know when i check with them and uh, by default uh, for a sharepoint and uh, uh, one drive for business what i have tested for one drive and exchange online it takes maximum 2 to 3 hours for sharepoint it takes some time uh, probably they introduce new extensions uh probably in upcoming days it will get resolved but ideally it is taking 48 hours yeah but i understood uh, while we creating a new policy it will take uh, 24 hours or 48 hours of time to reflect mm-hmm. but after the policy is applied i'm uploading the document uh, that time it will taking so much time to send the alert to admin or a user Cor- and i just are trying to upload the document it's uploaded i'm sharing the document and share it to the external user mm mm-hmm. Uh, yes that is what uh, if you see uh, in the, in my one up my slide uh, let me this is what it is uh, asynchronous dlp policy right sharepoint works in that way see uh, say example you uploaded now but uh, search crawl uh, app owner just to, uh, 
a few seconds back right uh, probably you need to wait for you know next search gravel to happen and the index to happen right okay. it, it takes time because uh, it completed index you know few seconds back user uploaded and the next induction maybe it will happen next half an hour or another one hour cycle right probably you need to wait for that cycle even uh, you see if you upload now in one drive it takes some time to show that indication so we have to wait up to one hour or 30 minutes but be before that if you should try to some try to share someone they can see the content inside the document right uh, they can see my credit card information yes card information. yes yes that uh, that leakage still it is there Jayanti. i am also facing same kind of issues it is there because it is uh -huh. taking some time it is not immediate action real time action it based on the index okay. action what it is for new policy, you're saying that uh, for new policy, it will take uh, two days of time. Uh, yes. But uh, after applying that policy, uh, at least it will take uh, one hour time to uh, uh, take the things up, right? Okay. Exactly. Uh, 48 hours means it is a maximum. Okay. Right? Okay, okay fine. Okay, Thanks. how to integrate with the third-party DLP system, right? So uh, as as long as you are asking, whether you are asking uh, for Exchange or other SharePoint sites, if yeah, if I consider it as a, for Exchange, uh, what you can do, right? After mail coming to your Exchange server, probably you can pass it to your third-party DLP, right? The connector you can create it. So whenever anybody sending to external party, you can pass it through that your third party get DLP gateway. So there uh, the DLP system will take action. Then they will get a report. That is how you need to do. For SharePoint and uh, uh, OneDrive for Business, I uh, have not seen anybody uh, you know uh, doing that as long as I understood. But uh, let me check for it. If I get some chance, definitely. I will I will notify you. You can you can contact me using my info you know contact details. I definitely get back to you on that. But Exchange yeah. Online, of uh, course, it's working. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Raja. So that's one specific to that. Uh, you know, the integrating with third party. What is that advantage over you know the third party DLP and you know the inbuilt DLP system? What is the advantage? Say in case of I have a huge users, mm -hmm. how the DLP systems? You know, the in some cases I say I apply a policy and it mm -hmm. takes long time to you know get reflected and uh, push it to the, all the users. When I apply to the third party system, mm -hmm. I integrate and I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so which is faster one? you know is it a integration matters or it is you know which is a best solution i should choose is it based on organization or what is that not there in the inbuilt dlp system what is there you know in the third party system so uh, when you are asking that question right or uh, dlp it depends on the platform i mean depends on the company say semantic also provide dlp and other companies also providing even microsoft provides right what are all the possible what are all the features they are adding along with that dlp see when you purchasing office 365 dlp is by default coming to you right you don't need to buy extra license and whatever microsoft giving along with that dlp you need to use that or if you want to more customization if it is possible yes you will get it if it is not matching and you need more customization if some other vendors providing to you definitely you need to consider for that but uh, as long as good and bad it depends on the vendor and depends on their uh, you know uh, supporting and advantages of their platforms hope i answered to you thank you okay. thank you thank you okay yeah thank you anybody else having any questions uh, let me go through the chat sessions i try to apply sharp okay jayanti uh, if you possible to tell azure anglo js class sorry uh, Manohar, I think uh, you are asking me <laughs> Azure and Angular JS class. Uh, it means you are asking webinars. I'm not sure. If it is a webinar, definitely you follow uh, you know uh, C Sharp Corner. There are uh, there are a lot of sessions uh, specifically for development guys, and uh, I am also you know uh, uh, seeing a lot of things. Uh, say DJ is taking more sessions on Angular JS and Azure. Many people nowadays they are taking for Azure. Built as a platform, platform as a service or DevOps. Uh, 
it's available uh, you can follow the chapters you will get it and anybody have any questions rk lalo here yes lalo please <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I just want to know uh, how does the policy will come and sit in my Outlook? Is it via uh, Auto Discover itself? Uh, the policy will come and sit in my Outlook, and how how does it keep updates? Uh, no, what what happens by default uh, when you are uh, you know uh, starting composing mail, right? As soon as you start composing mail, there is a drivers running behind the scenes, right? Store drivers. and uh, you know my outlook drivers running behind the scenes so you are composing something right that uh, that drivers keeps on checking what you are doing right uh, as soon as you to seeing something it is immediately popping up there right it basically happens through drivers outlook drivers which is available on your interface or outlook and it is happening through server it is not getting stored on your outlook directly it is happening uh, between server and outlook interface uh, in your new message compose you mean to say it is a, a real time interface when real -time. i am uh, it is a real time it it and build. yes uh, okay. if it is uh, if so for that, uh yeah okay. i will disturb you for a minute what happens uh, for ms office if you are using ms office you want to protect users right that time uh, ms office suit it gets that uh, you know uh, policy distributed to the machines but exchange sharepoint whatever business it is all real time uh, you know uh, protections yeah please go ahead uh, uh, vimal yeah actually one more small query so it is all about the intelligence uh, which uh, which the outlook how, how can i assume uh, it has the uh, intelligence where outlook has otherwise uh, where the inbuilt mechanism i mean to say uh, in the in between any mechanism called as you said the uh, drivers will be into picture mm -hmm. in this i uh, guess there is uh, you know both your outlook also servers playing the game right so outlook has that uh, you know feature say uh, when somebody opens a new uh, composing mail interface right so back end the your outlook calls servers and the servers keeps eye on your data what you are typing you both way it uh, interacts and uh, when you are uh, when you are asking what kind of protocols and uh, you know uh, things behind the scenes i am also not aware definitely i will check on that okay. if you want and uh, i'll let you know later on this okay and one more small uh, last thing actually uh, you have shown when uh, uh, i mean to say one word file you try to attend right in that i have seen many many uh, many things like uh, you have updated the same thing again and again i mean right. say pan card number pan card number you just copied and pasted it right uh, for example if if you have kept only one pan card number I, I, otherwise uh, yeah like this uh -huh. so in that you have removed uh, the name as pan card number you saved as a different file and if you are trying to send will it have the intelligence to uh, send the file otherwise will it uh, will it allow uh actually what happens vimal by default anything matters right anything matters see if you are typing nbpr 3220m okay if i remove pan number from this right what you will say this yeah what you you cannot yeah, consider then... it as a pan card right so what happens uh, that is a really good question vimal what happens uh, your dlp policies keeps eye on both uh, what kind of characters you are matching and what is there in that mail chain there is a conditions available i definitely uh, review that article see uh, it should be pan or uh, you know uh, india permanent account number something they are typing right pan uh, india permanent account number something they are typing microsoft takes that words and correlates it along with this numbers see i typed pan here okay if i typed separately there is no meaning of pan right it can be anything yeah, yeah. if i am matching here along with pan what happens microsoft takes this information along with this and correlates and checks so a user typed pan yes there is a characters matching to the policy and the 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 numbers whatever digits here are available right 
it will it is they are validating yeah. by digits say a and b p r this is the you know by default government has certain policy for that a and b p r 3220m there is a policy defined for it this many characters after this this many numbers this many character after that is a policy is there by indian government so that they are correlating and taking that information and if it is matching and giving that is where i mentioned uh confidence level i mentioned it there right confidence matching so microsoft what it yes. does uh, if it is if you are adding like two different lines right so uh, even if it is considered the confidence level will be low for this you getting me so by default they yeah, will yeah. correlate uh, and they will give you the confidence level if it is lower so probably we can uh, uh, remove uh, you know uh, ignore it if it is higher we can higher means it will be followed with can uh, you know pan number something if it is continued right it is higher the confidence level also will go high so microsoft not only the numbers they are validating along with other information as well and that is really good question vimal i appreciate that thank you any other questions all right so uh, i hope uh, you know uh, session was uh, you know uh, uh, clear and i explained uh, you know uh, as much as possible and you understood what i told if you have any doubts or you want to uh, get some you know more knowledge on it please reach on this contact information uh, contact details definitely i am really happy to reach you people and clarify your doubts and i am really uh, interested to work as a you know uh, collaborative teams right thank you very much uh, everyone for joining in this call and uh, thank you and here with i am ending up and thank you thank you thank you